So we just transferred Matt over from his belly onto his back. And as you can see, his shoulders are here, his hips are over here, his legs are over here. We want to make sure that he's in very good alignment. So I'm just going to come here. I'm just going to grab onto his hips and we're going to bring him back to the center. There we go. So now you can see his hips and his shoulders are in the same area instead of being off to the side. So next to set him up for stretching while he's on his back, I'm going to take one sandbag. And it's okay, if, I don't know how many sandbags you guys have at home, but um, you can always use a rolled up towel or uh, a blanket or something like that and put that underneath his knee. And this is the same setup for both sides. You always want to have something rolled up underneath his knee because when you're doing the stretching and stuff with these sandbags on top of his legs, if you didn't have anything, it'd be straight and he'd a lot of pressure and you could end up overstretching his ligaments here in the back. So it's always very important to keep something rolled up underneath his knee. I just do one here below his knee. So this is his patella right here. And then I do one above his knee. And you never want to put one of these sandbags directly on top of his kneecap. You always want to put them above and below. And just make sure that throughout stretching and stuff that you're paying attention to whichever leg is not being stretched. Just to make sure that he hasn't wiggled his way out and rotating his leg, especially with all this weight on there. That would not be good for his ligaments and his muscles. So that's the setup for stretching. Also with rolling with Matthew, you need to be holding on to his left leg here as he does like a log roll, keeping his leg out so that it doesn't cross over the center of his body. So when he's rolling, you're just gonna hold on to it as he goes onto his belly when he comes back so that it's not, go, you know, internally rotating or crossing over the center of his body since he's had hip surgery and stuff done on it. Since Matt has had hip surgery on his uh, right hip there, it's really important not to do certain things with him. One of them is when he's sitting, if you were to long sit, you don't want him to go past 90 degrees at his hips. Which would mean reaching for his toes and stuff, crossing more than 90 degrees. Yeah. Good. If he's sitting at the edge of the bed, with um, his legs down, again, reaching forward, you want to really kind of limit that motion um, because with this popping the hip out of the socket, um, it's putting a lot of stress on it. He's had that hip surgery to correct that one. The other two things are um, if he's laying down, having his right leg crossing over midline. So if it was to come over this way, or even during transfers when you're rolling, so how my knee dropped down, it's crossing midline. So that's putting strain on that hip there. Also, if he's standing and internally rotating like this, that's putting strain on that hip. Or even if his knee is coming in when he's standing, you want to always make sure that he's standing with his legs straight. And he's not ever crossing like this either. That's a no-no for those for hip surgeries. Yeah. Um, so yes, watch your internal rotation, any crossing of the hip sinking when he's rolling, and to make sure that he's not going past 90 degrees at the hip when he's sitting down. Okay, I've also been doing a shoulder massage to Matthew here to help get the shoulder back. You see it's very anterior and very, very forward. So that's because his pec muscles here are tight, along with his traps up here. So I do a massage here, and up through his shoulder. Let's put some lotion on him. So I kind of do like a, a C motion here. My hands are both like C's, and I'm going to bring this thumb to these fingers, and this thumb to these fingers. Kind of do that all over his pec muscle. And you really want to focus right in here. This muscle part of the muscle is really tight here. You'll, you'll be able to feel, you can like grab it basically. <laughs> you'll be able to feel that it's tighter here, this part. And I'll work the whole pec area doing that. And also, it's kind of hard to see, I know, um, his traps up here. And I'll kind of do like little squeezes here, kind of work that. I'll also get two hands in, I'm kind of doing that same C motion as best as I can with his shirt on. I'm using more of my fingertips. You want to work 
that muscle. I'll do circles. So I'm just doing like this up in there. I also will do some myofascial releases. So one of them is to put one hand at his shoulder here. So it's going to be the one that's closest to him. And your other hand is going to go up here by his neck. So you're going to bring your hand up a little bit higher. You're going to slowly pull your underneath hand down and out to that shoulder. You're going to keep this hand here stabilizing the muscle in my upper hand by his neck. You can do that a few times. Just slowly pull it out. And also, if you hang out here, you're giving him a trap stretch. So you're stretching his upper traps. He needs to be looking in the opposite direction, away from that shoulder. So I'll do this three times for 30 seconds. And then to do a myofascial release here at his pectoral muscle, you're going to put your two hands, cross them, put them really close, and then you're just going to press out. So it should be really slow. It's going a little bit faster because he's got lotion on still, but I'm going to try to wipe most of it off before I do this. I press out towards his shoulder. And I'll do that a few times. I'll kind of move my hands throughout the muscle group there. Do one here and one up here and one here. And then we will do the pectoralis stretch here, stretch out this pec major muscle. So for this one, we're going to have, I'm going to cross my arms. You want to take your outside hand and you're going to bring it in towards his chest and you're going to kind of hold the muscle down so we're going to stabilize it. And with your other hand, I was holding here at his elbow and you're going to kind of bring him out in a diagonal away from that, nice and slow. So you a nice pec stretch. I'll do this three times for 30 seconds. Also, I'll do a little bit of massage here to his biceps here, from his, or his elbow bends up towards his shoulder, we'll work that a little bit. And then I'll do a bicep stretch. So for this one, you're going to have one hand cradling his elbow here, and you're going to stick your hand inside of his hand, you're going to gently pull it down until you feel it's in range. You feel it's kind of springy, I'm just going to hold it there. And I do this three times for 30 seconds. And then I do a couple hand stretches. So one is a thumb stretch. You're going to wiggle both your thumbs into his palm here. And relax for a minute. I'll pull your shirt down in a minute, okay? You're going to put your thumb over top of his thumb. And you're going to gently press it out. And you're going to do this three times for 30 seconds. I'm also going to do a wrist um, extensor stretch. So for this one, yeah, it's easier if you bend his wrist first, kind of opens up his palm, and then I'll try to wiggle my fingers in here. So as you can see, I can get about three of them in there. Now what you're going to do is we're going to stabilize below the wrist here. So my hand here is to hold on to these, these bones here to stabilize. And then, Matthew, can you stop playing for a minute? Thank you. He's playing his game right now, so his hand's getting really tight. He's like squeezing me. Relax. Relax. There you go. Then you're going to gently press it back. So that's stretching out these muscles right here. At the same time, I'm kind of using my fingers here to kind of keep that thumb out from not coming in. And after you do that three times for 30 seconds, then I'll work my hand up to his fingers, and I'll work on straightening his fingers. And again, I'm using my thumb to kind of keep that thumb out. And I'll do these finger stretches three times for 30 seconds. You might see a lot of redness in his palm. 
that's just the blood flow coming and stuff because of the, the stretches that you're doing. You're releasing the fascia when the muscles are getting stretched is what happens. So don't freak out if you're like, whoa, his hand's really red. It's a okay. And those are Matthew's arm stretches. So um, for Matthew's warm up, when we have him laying on his back when we first start for the stretch with, to his left leg with the weight, I've been putting up the five pound weight around his ankle here, and I've just been taking two of these sandbags on both sides and kind of wedging them next to his leg to keep it nice and straight so that we're making sure that he's getting a straight stretch down instead of his leg being rotated to one side or the other. And then once we get him flipped over after we do his slash to his shoulder and stuff, I do the same thing to this leg. Just kind of wedge these two in between here just so that it stays straight. And I'm going to massage this leg. And while I'm doing this, on his right shoulder here, I just have a sandbag tucked up underneath that shoulder to help bring it back to a little bit of a prolonged stretch to those muscles there while we're uh, doing this massage to his hamstrings over here. So, for his hamstrings, some of the techniques and stuff that I've been doing some lotion. I will come here on the side. I'll kind of make my hands like two C's. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this thumb to this index finger here and then back the opposite way. So I'll kind of do this motion up and down his hamstrings. Getting in there to kind of loosen them up a little bit. This isn't really helping to get any um, length. This is more just helping to relax the muscles so that the next few things that I do we can get some really good length that once the Muscles are more relaxed. So I'll do this for a little bit. And once I feel that his muscles is kind of relaxed, I can get some good range out of them. Then I'll start doing one technique, it's called the uh, Rolfing. So I'm going to take my one hand here and I'm going to kind of hold down those tendons here so it gives a little bit of a stretch. Then I'm going to make like a fist with my hand and I'm going to use my knuckles, I'm kind of like moving my fingers like this as I go along to help break up that fascia. And those hamstring muscles. Just kind of work that all the way up. Make sure you're getting on the inside too of his leg. After I do that for a little bit, then I'll also we'll just do a straight just press up nice and slow. You're giving you're giving pretty good pressure through your hand here. Called, uh, it's called muscle stripping. So you really want it a little bit not so slippery. What you're going to find his tendons. He's got three tendons down here. There's one here on the lateral side. You can feel here's another one. And then there's one, one more over here. So there's two right here and one here. So what you're going to do is you're going to kind of pin one down with your thumb. And then with your thumb and your next finger, you're going to follow that up pressing down into that tendon, pulling it up into the muscle to get some length. You're going to do the same thing on the other 
too. Sometimes you might feel like some crackling. That's just the fascia releasing. It's a little bit harder to get in here. So it makes it away. Just always be aware that you always put more pressure through your thumb than you do any other finger. So just be a little bit more cautious how much pressure you're putting through your thumb. I've also been doing a functional massage with him. So for that one, you're going to put your kind of like fist, your knuckles. So the resting on is the hamstrings right here where his knee bends. So this is where it's going to start. And as you extend his leg down, you want to press and extend up into the hamstrings. And I'll stop at halfway. I'll do it again. And I'll just do it nice and slow. I'll repeat this a few times. are the slash two things that I'm using on his hamstrings here. So for Matthew, I've been doing some leg stretches for him. So as you can see, we got him set up for stretching. His leg does like to externally rotate. So before you start, you just want to bring it back into a neutral, neutral position, which is knees and toes pointing up towards the ceiling. So his leg like this, and you can even sit closer to him. Sometimes I'll use my body kind of block it so that I can have my hands free to do some stretching and stuff. I always use a towel to uh, grip onto his heel bone to do the gastroc stretch. The heel cord stretch which is the muscle back here that you're going to stretch. But for this one I'll show you without the towel first. You want to make sure that you grab on to uh, the calcaneus, the heel bone here, with uh, your thumb and like these two fingers. Really grip onto that bone. This is very important. You want to make sure that you're pulling straight down this way away from his body, okay? Kind of like if you're just pulling his leg straight down with that hand there. And while you're doing that then, you're going to press up on his forefoot here, like so. Now it's really important that you're pulling down at the same time because if you were just to be pushing through his forefoot here, all what you're stretching is all these little ligaments here on the bottom of his foot. You're not actually stretching his uh, gastroc here, you're just stretching these ligaments here. So it's really important to make sure you get a good grip Pull down, even if you want to pull down first, and then push up. I do this three times for 30 seconds. You always want to make sure his toes and his knees are pointing up towards the ceiling. The next stretch that I do, and I don't normally do this to his uh, left leg here because he's got really good range in his short adductors, but I definitely do do it to his right. This is a short adductor stretch. Your adductors are located inside your thigh here. Your short ones attach just above the knee. So for this one, you're gonna bring him into a hook line position, which is what this is called, this is hook line. Put his foot on the bed and his knee up off of it. And with my right hand, I'm gonna use it to bring his knee out. My left hand is going to go at his hip to stabilize. Again, you don't want his pelvis twisting or turning when you're doing these stretches. 
something you just have to stabilize right on his hip bone. And uh, if he complains about your hand hurting, you can always fold the towel up and put it there to get a little bit of cushion so it doesn't bother him. But the most important thing is, is when you're pushing this leg out, you want the foot to roll up off the bed like this. It should roll out, the whole foot should move. You don't want it staying planted and then rolling it out, because if it stays planted, we're stretching all these little ligaments here around the ankle. So always just check and make sure that the whole foot is coming up off the bed. So I'm going to stabilize at his hip, and I'm going to bring this knee out. And he's got full range here. And you just always go until you feel resistance. You don't want to push through anything. It should be nice and gentle and slow. And again, I do the stretch three times for 30 seconds. And you don't need to, to do it on the left side here. I'm going to show you the side that I'm on. But um, the right side definitely needs it. The next stretch is the long adductor stretch. So your long adductors, again, they're on the inside of your leg. They attach below the knee, though. So for this one, the leg is going to be straight. Again, we want to make sure that the knee and toes are pointing up towards the ceiling. It's a little bit trickier. He really likes to roll out. So my hand down here, I use my right hand at his heel. It's going to help control that rotation. But I'm not putting any force to his hand to force his leg out. All my force is coming from my hand that's going to be above his knee. Don't put your hand at his knee because then you're pushing here, the two bones are at the joint, and you're stretching those ligaments there. You're putting force at the joint. You want to make sure your hand is above the knee at his thigh. So keeping his knee and toes up, you're going to gently press his leg out until you feel resistance and hold it there. As he relaxes, you can get a little bit more range. Just go nice and slow. If he starts to play, he'll let you know if it's too much. And again, I do this three times for 30 seconds. The next stretch that I do is um, internal rotators. So internal rotators on the inside of your leg again. They're the muscles that pull your knees in. And those are tight on Matthew. So we're going to bring his knee into a 90 degree angle here. So I'm going to let his heel here rest in my forearm. We have also 90 degrees at the hip. I'm going to take both my hands, wrap my, my outside hand around into the inside of his thigh here. And we're going to rotate his knee out. So it looks kind of like you're sitting crisscross sitting. Again, you just go until you feel resistance. You don't want to force anything. Do this three times for 30 seconds. And I'm not putting any force at all through my elbow. My elbow is just holding up his foot. So don't be pushing through your, your shoulder there. It's all up the hands. Good job. And the one stretch that we've been doing on the left side here is the piriformis stretch. The piriformis connects um, in the back here from your, your pelvis to your femur here. So to stretch that, all you're going to do we're going to get him, and kind of, this is called like a hook line position, except his foot's kind of floating up here. And you want to take your one hand at his knee here, and you're going to push this knee towards his opposite shoulder. And you should put another hand here at his hip here, just to kind of feel what's going on. So my hips kind of, my hips, my hand is down here at his hip here. I'm just going to gently push it towards that shoulder. And this is just on the left side only. Do not do this on the right side, because he's had hip surgery on that side. And I'll do this three times for 30 seconds. You're not going to really see that much range on the side. He's, he's tight. His performance is tight. So basically, it's going in a diagonal this way. If you just bring his knee up to his chest this way, you're stretching um, his hip extensors. So when you bring his knee towards his shoulder, this is getting into his performance. also been doing um, a knee extension mobilization on the right only. The right, he has a contracture of this knee. I'll show you on the left. Um, but usually what I do is usually I prop his leg up on my thigh here so that it's elevated. And what you're going to do is you're going to bend his knee and you're going to find these little tiny grooves in the side. This is where the femur meets the tibia here. 
there's just these little indentations. When you move it, you can kind of you can feel the joint move. And if you don't feel comfortable with this, please don't do it. But uh, if you feel comfortable, if you can find the joints and stuff, it's right there. I can feel that the the space there. What you're gonna do is your lower hand here at his tibia is gonna be underneath, and you're gonna leave your fingers there. And I'm gonna bring my other hand over top, my fingers right next to them, and you're going to press straight down. So I'm holding, I'm pressing his, I'm stabilizing the tibia and I'm pressing his femur down. And I'll hold this for like a minute. I'll do this three times for one minute. And sometimes I'll oscillate it a little bit, really gently. Because what a knee contracture is, it's basically when the, the ligaments inside the knee get tight. So it's different than a muscle um, tightness, it's a joint tightness. So you need to loosen up the ligaments that are inside the joint capsule. And you always want again, you want to make sure his knees and toes are pointing up towards the ceiling and he's got a straight leg. And again, you only need to do this on the, the right knee. The left leg is good. But I just wanted to show you. This is something that, you know, once you are comfortable with him and stuff, you want to, to try and find. And again, you got to make sure that you're finding where the bones meet. It just feels like a little tiny dip right here and right here. The next thing that we do is a hamstring stretch. So for this, I always like to start um, less than 90 degrees at the hip because I want to stretch out the end range of his hamstring muscles. So I'm going to put one hand above his knee to stabilize. My other hand's gonna go here by his ankle. I'm gonna gently press up his foot towards the ceiling. You wanna make sure that his toes and his knees are both facing up towards the ceiling. You wanna make sure that his knee's not going in or out. You wanna make sure that it's straight. I'm gonna gently press up. I'm gonna hold it for 30 seconds. And every time I do it, I get a little bit higher and a little bit higher. So I like to start off where his end range is stretch those ligaments and those tendons at the end range. And then I'll move it up and I'll do a stretch here and I'll move it up and do another stretch there. So we do three of those total. The last thing I do are joint compressions to his hips, knees, and his ankles. So a joint compression basically is when you're taking um, the two parts of the joint for his femur. It's the, the head of the femur here and the acetabulum, which is the pelvic socket that it fits into, that it moves around in. And basically, you just want to press that femur into that joint or move it in all different directions. So every time the two joints are touching, it's sending a message from that joint to his brain back of where that joint is in space. Uh, it's going to help with his nervous pathways, making them clearer and smoother to help with his motor planning when he's trying to uh, do activities and stuff. So I'm just going to bring his leg up into a 90 degree angle here with two hands around his thigh here above his knees. I'm just going to gently press down into that socket and I'm pushing only, I'm not pulling up. And then I'm going to do little circles because this is a ball and socket joint. We want to make sure we're getting all aspects of the joint capsule. back the other way. Because Matthew does have um, hip issues, I am going to try to stay away from crossing midline and going past neutral, past 90 degrees at his hips. I'm going to more on this outer side. Then to go to his knee, so I'm going to stabilize above his knee here. So his hand's just going to stabilize, just going to hold on. My hand is going to go below his knee here at his tibia. I'm just going to press up towards his hip. And again, I'm just pushing up. I'm not pulling down. It may look like I'm pulling down, but I'm not. I'm just pushing up. And you don't need to put like, a lot of force through this or anyways. This is just real gentle. Usually I do about 30 of these. And the last one I do is for his ankle. So for this one, I always like to put his foot down on the bed 
And I'm going to stabilize it here with my hand, just below his ankle. My other hand's gonna go here at his knee, not on his patella, above his knee here on his thigh. And I'm gonna press straight down into his foot. I'll do that about 30 times. And those are Matthew's stretches. So next I'm gonna show you how to stretch Matthew's uh, quads and his hip flexors. So when you're doing this, you always wanna make sure that Matthew's in really good alignment while he's laying. You wanna make sure that his hips are centered and that this leg looks nice, see how his heel is facing up towards the ceiling. Right now this leg is uh, externally rotated, but I'm gonna fix that before I stretch it. So I always wanna make sure that his heel is in alignment with the rest of his leg all the way up. You're gonna start with a bent at 90 degrees here. And I'm gonna usually put my hand here like at his ankle. Then you're gonna use your other hand, right? Um, this is his back here, this is where his pants are. His hand right here on his pelvis here to keep it down. You wanna make sure now that he's not rotating, because if he's rotating and stuff, then you're not gonna get a proper stretch. So just keep that down. You don't need to push real hard, but just keep your hand there to stabilize it. You're just gonna gently and slowly bring his foot towards his bottom. If you can tell or not, he's already kind of pushing up a little bit. He feels a stretch in his quad. It's just be nice and gentle. You don't need to force anything. It's nice and gentle. I hold it for 30 seconds and I do this three times. The next stretch that I do is this hip flexor stretch. So it's pretty much about the same thing except instead of my hand being here, I'm going to bring it down here to his knee and I'm going to cradle his arm here like this. Again, I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to stabilize at his pelvis. I'm going to gently And also, if you feel like you're getting pretty good range, you can also kind of flex his knee, bringing his, yeah, his heel towards his bottom a little bit. That'll also kick in the quad stretch at the same time. Get a little bit bigger stretch. Breathe. Again, I do these three times for 30 seconds. And those are his uh, belly stretches. So, so, so what we do is doing this. Very good, Matthew. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Matthew is doing heel slides. So we have a five pound ankle weight on him. He's pulling his ankle all the way, or his ankle all the way up to his bottom, and he's pushing it back down again. I'm watching his alignment. You really want to make sure that his knees and toes are pointing straight, and they're not going in or out. You also want to pay attention to the rest of his body, making sure that his other leg is still in good alignment while he's doing these. We do 35 of these right now. Right, Matthew? Yes. Yes, we do 35 heel slides. You want to make sure he's coming all the way down. Sometimes he gets tired and he'll stop halfway. You want to make sure he's going all the way down and all the way up. And as he gets really good with this, you can actually give him resistance. So like you can resist him, push down. Push down. So I'm resisting him pushing down right now. And you can also resist him up here at his knee to pull up. Pull up. Pull your knee up. Pull, 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 pull. There you go. And push. Push. So resist him at his foot when he goes down and at his knee when he goes up. Pull it up. Pull it up. Good job, Matthew. Let's show them the next one, okay? Yeah. Okay. So the next one we do are some short arc quads. So I'm using this little blue peanut here. But at home... Matthew has, uh, what is it? Uh, it's not a towel. It's some sort of wedge that he uses between his knees um, for at nighttime. Right, Matthew? Yes. Yeah. That's like rolled up that you can use. And you can also, if you need to, you can add um, another towel around it to make it a little bit bigger. This is it's a pretty good circumference. It's probably about maybe 12, 10, 12 inches there ish. Right, Matthew? Ish. Yeah. We're going to put his leg up on the peanut, or up under the wedge you guys have at home. Ready to get in the center. Again, we have the five pound weight on his ankle. I'm going to put one hand at his knee here, because I can cue here, kind of like tickling him here, sort of, at the quad muscle. You can either kind of do this, or you can tap him to get him to activate. He's having difficulty, but he likes his shorts down. Yep, they're down. I got them down. Yep. I'll hold them. They're down all the way. And we're going to have Matthew kick up. So get my hand. So, 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 so what will we do? Yep. Kick. One. Make sure you're 
sure you go all the way down. There you go. Big kick. Two. I can't give him like a target. First three. Big kick. Three. There you go. Big kick. Big kick. Up. What happened? Big kick. Four. There you go. Nice. Where's five? Good job. Where's six? Go, go. Good. Seven. Woo. Number eight. Awesome. So again, we do 35 of these with a five pound weight. And as he gets stronger with this, you can even have him kick up and hold it. Try to hold his legs straight. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. That's really engaging those quads. Good job. So you can do a kick with like a five second hold. Awesome, Matthew. So we have two more exercises to do. This next one is going to be with a leg splint. Check it out. We have two more, Matthew. Let's show them two more, and then we'll take that off, okay? Yeah. Okay. We're going to put the leg split on. So this is going to keep his leg nice and straight. And the reason why we're using a leg splint is so we can isolate muscles. No, 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 no. Your knee is okay. So we're going to isolate his hip flexor and also his hip abductors. So your hip flexor is in the front of your hip here in the pelvis what you would do to do it, a straight leg kick, which is what we're going to do, and your hip adductors are here on the side of your kick, which is what you would do if you were like sidestepping. So again, when you're putting this on, you want to make sure really see, that his patella and his toes are facing upward while you put this on. You want to make sure you're not getting it rotated in there, because then you're not going to get the right muscles. Right, Matthew? Yeah, well, what, 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 what's today? Today is Tuesday. Videotaping day. Again, we're going to use a five pound weight. So the first exercise we're going to do is hip flexion. So mainly what I'm doing here is I need, my job is to keep his leg straight so that it's not going out like that. So I'm going to hold on to the leg splint here. I kind of hold on to the metal stays there on the side to keep it straight. And I do assist a little bit, um, but more just to get the full range that I want for the brain activation so the brain knows that it should be bringing the leg up higher um, than what he actually is. Okay, ready? Big kick. Where's one? One. Two. Good. Three, so this is working his hip flexor up here. Good job. Big kick, big kick. There you go. Awesome, Matthew. Good. How, let's just see some really big ones. How big can you go? Whoa, whoa. Look how high you can go. Good job. Good job, Matthew. Awesome, should we show them the next one? Yes, please. Okay, the next one is hip abduction. So he's going to do kick out to the side. He's going to get out of his way. So again, my job is to hold his leg straight. So you want to make sure that his knee and toes are facing up towards the ceiling as he kicks out and brings it back in. So ready? So kick out. Out, 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 good. And back in. And out. Out, 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 and in. And out. Good. And in. And again, we do 35 of all these exercises. Out, 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 and in. If he gets to the point where he's just like rocking through them like nothing, then you can go ahead and you can increase the amount of weight at hit the um, ankle. If you can find like a half pound or a pound or something like that, or even just add manual resistance. So like resistance would be like, you know, like me, I'm resisting right now, so he's got to push out against me too. Just so he's got to pull in against you. There you go. Two more. Good job. One more. Awesome. Good job, Matthew. Thank you. And those are our leg exercises. Another exercise I'm working on is some lower abdominal crunches to help strengthen those tummy muscles. Right? Yes. So we're gonna pull knees to chest. Yes. Ready? No, no, no. I'm I'll hold. I'll hold your shorts. Okay, go. Hey. One, two, three, four, five, uh. six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. How many of these do we do, Matthew? No. How many do we do? 
Oh, we do 30, 35 of these. Very good. Relax. We're going to do time for the video, okay? So we do 35 of these. I recommend doing these probably at least two to three times a week, doing 35 lower ab crunches. And if you have his braces on, it adds extra weight. It makes it harder, so that's even better for Matthew, right? Yeah. Right. Or you can put like two... We haven't tried yet with two five pound ankle weights, but uh, you can try with any ankle weights that they have at home um, and see if you can do it. If you can, great. If not, then take them off and either have these braces on or just do them without. Okay? We've also been working on um, strengthening the hip abductors here. So I'm going to have him here in the hook lying. I'm going to tip his knees to one side. Matthew, I want you to pull them over to the other side. Yeah. Okay? He's really just going to do this knee. Um, which is fine because this leg is one he's had hip surgery on, and we really don't want him crossing midline. So bring this knee out. Good. One, two, three, four, five. I'm giving a little bit of resistance here. Six. He's got to push my hand out. Seven. We're going to do 35 of these, and we'll do 35 to the other side too. Good job, Matthew. Good. Let's show her the other one. Money, money, money. Uh... Matthew likes this legs covered. So we're going to tip him this way and yes we are crossing midline but since we're working on strengthening and we're not hanging out in this position for too long it's okay to go a little bit past midline. Just be careful that he's not hanging out here for a while. Okay ready? These knees. Good. One. Two. And again you can use resistance at his knees here. Push to uh, a little bit more strength. Push, 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 push my hands away. There you go. Push. Good job. I'm going to do 35 again to this side. And these I'd probably do, I'd probably do at least four to five times a week this exercise working on this. Okay, Matthew? Yeah. Okay. So we've been working on two shoulder exercises with Matthew. One is external rotation. This exercise here to help get that shoulder back to strengthen your scapular muscles, the shoulder girdle back here. And the other one is uh, scapular retraction with um, arm extension like this. So you can either do it straight or you can do it bent. So I just have um, a TheraBand here that is hooked to the side of our cage. You can tie this to a bed post or a kitchen table or drawer, stair, doorknob, something that's not going to move. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take Matthew's arm here, we're going to loop this around, and I'm just going to use, I'm gonna, just going to squeeze right here, hold it closed around his arm, I'm going to have you pull this way, Matthew, okay? Pull it back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, make them nice, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 35, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, last five, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, whoop, whoop, whoop. Good job, buddy. He does a very nice job of that. Very nice job. And then we're just going to move it. We're kind of farther than what we were the other day. Oh, maybe I did. I think I had to untie it last time. Okay. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. okay. So the next one, we're going to make this one higher. So you can even stick this in like inside like tie a knot on one end and right put it inside of a door and shut the door right so that it stays. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> you might have to do a change to take care of it. Alright, stop for a second. Okay, so next exercise, we have him pull your whole arm. We're going to pull all the way down like this, okay? There you go. Yeah. Go. One. Love it, love it, love it. You do. I'm just making sure it doesn't... Two. Three. Love it, love it. Four. Love it, love it. Okay, you do. Five. Six. You can also put um, an arm splint on Matthew to keep his arm straight. I'm just trying to kind of, there you go. 13, Big pull, pull all the way down. Touch the bench, try to touch the bench. There you go, touch the bench. There you go. So 
slow it down, do it nice. Six, seven, eight, seven, nine. Big pulse. Thirty. Thirty-one. Thirty-two. Thirty-three. Thirty-four. Thirty-five. Awesome. So I would recommend doing these probably three to five times a week. You can just, you know, just doing them 35 reps three to five times a week would be good for Matthew. Get those muscles are working. So we've been working on having Matthew sitting here at the edge of the bed, transitioning into kneeling here on the four inch foam step that we got. So for this, let's have Matthew scooch forward once, scooch towards the edge of the bed one time, do a good scooch. Good. Now what do we have to do? How do we get down? Elbowing the knee. Good job. Our hands, we go on the X. Look at the X. See, X marks the spot. Yes. Put your hand over there. Good. X marks the spot. There you go. Hand. Good. Elbow hand knee. Nose over knees. And yeah. scooch on down to your knees. Okay. There you go. Scooch down to your knees. Elbow. Nose over knees. Scooch down. There you go. Nose over knees. One, two, three, go. go. You got it, you got it, you got it. Good. Put your hand up there. Good job, you got it. I'm only doing fingertips only, you're doing all the work. All right, I'm right here though, okay? Step this leg out. That was a good one, Matt. That was really good. Step, there you go. Oh yeah, she's working on with the, the AFO, uh -uh, with this as opposed to the K. AFO. It's easier if his, his, his uh, calf on the button gets caught and he's kind of getting twisted up with that. Um, eventually, you know, practice with that too, but right now until he gets it really fluid and smooth and he feels really confident with it, continues working with AFO. Mm -hmm. And then uh, once he gets that down really good, then start working with um, the KFO to get him used to using that too. Yay, Matthew! Nice job! Good job! Good job. Now another high five for that. Awesome. That was a good one. Those are all initiated, aren't they? Mm -hmm. You don't have 
Yep. These quads work. Yep. Hips up. Yeah, push through those legs. Push! push. Look push. at you! Push. Push. Wow! Push. 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 Good. You're safe. You got it, man. You got it. Good job. Scoot. Scoot back.
push through lefty. There you go. Push tall. That's nice. Good push. Good push. Good push. Push up tall. Make lefty straight. What's this one? Lefty? Push. Push it straight. Make it straight and it'll feel better. Push, push, push. Push nice and tall. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Push, push, push. Push, push. There you go. Push up nice and tall. Make it straight. Up, up, up. Make it straight, straight, straight. And it's not going to get all the way straight because he does have a, a, a knee contracture there. But you can definitely tell when he's activating versus when he's not activating. Ready? Big push up right now. Push. There we go. That's activating. Good job. Push nice and tall. It's got to 20. Push, one, push, push. Two, make, up you need to make that leg three, straight. Push. One, four, one two, two, three, three, three five, four, five, six, six seven, eight. Push tall. Nine, push. Ten. How many we on you? 20. 11. Mm -hmm. Push. 14, nice 14, and tall. 15, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Push, push, push. 30. 30. Very 31. good. Oh, next one. Push tall. You're, you're melting. Push tall. You're not a snowman. Push tall. There you go. Good job. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Good job. You want to sit? Alright, sit down nice and slow. Good. Good job. Ooh -wee. So this is something that I would uh, maybe spend like 10, 15 minutes at a time working on this. Maybe two to three days a week. Right? Making a lefty push, push, push. Yes. Right? Yes. Right. Very good. Okay. We've also been working with um, a little bit of a, of a step in front of him. We're going to trade off putting his left foot up and putting his right foot up. When he puts his left foot up, that's going to work on weight shifting onto his right side. And when his right foot is up, that's going to work on making lefty straight and making lefty stronger. Right, Matthew? Yeah. Who wants to go first, righty or lefty? I'm out. Lefty. Lefty? Okay. Mm -hmm. So we got to lean to our right. Good. Let's pick our foot up. Put it on the step. And you want to make sure that you're putting a sandbag at the end um, to block it from good going farther and one on top of two to kind of weight it down. So push tall, push through righty, push through righty. There you go. You can see he really wants to weight shift to the left. Lean to our right side, lean this way. Lean this way. I got you, Matthew. You're good. And you can even push tall, push tall. Your hand is fine, Matthew. You can rock him. To the right, slightly weight shift him. Break, break. You're fine. Push tall. Push tall. Push tall, Matthew. You're safe. Up, up, up. He's worried about his hand. Oh, count to ten. Right hand. His right hand came off the grip. Up. He's worried about it. Other hand. Right hand. Oh, great. Right. <laughs> there you go. Okay, now Matthew, push, push. stand up. Push. Push. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. There we Good. go. Nice and tall. Good job. So you can give his gentle weight shifts. This is just a slight push. Push him over to the right and bring him back. Push him over to the right and bring him back. It's really hard for him to go to that side. I I'd probably do maybe like 30 seconds at a time. Go ahead and sit down. Good step. Good stepping that leg off. That was nice. Good job. Very nice, Matthew. Very nice. Good job. So do like 30 seconds at a time for the, for the weight shifts. And even with the other leg up too, it's really hard for him to maintain standing for that long. But gradually build it up. We're going to do 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 40, right? And on up. Yeah. Yeah, until we get stronger. Should we show them with righty up? Should we show them how strong the lefty is? That is. Put our hands back up here. Where's righty? I want to help you out for the sake of the video time here. Okay. Got it good? No, you know me. Good, Matthew. It's good. It's on there. All right, let's stand up. One, two, three, go. Push, 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 push. All right, now we're going to put righty up there. So lefty's got to push really hard. Ready? Take righty up. Pull it up. One, two, three, big pull up. Very good. So now righty, he's using his arms a lot though right now. Mm -hmm. Push through lefty. Relax our arms. We need our leg to work. Okay? So this is something where if there's more than one of you, or if you have 
something higher that he can hold on to. You can see he's really using his arms, or he can hold on to a higher, or either onto someone's hands, or a higher surface, like a countertop or something like that. The rail in the living room. The rail in the living room, where he can work on this to push through lefty. Push, 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 push. There you go. To work on him activating that left leg. He still is activating and pushing through it, but he's definitely, you can see I can make it a lot straighter. He's, not, he's using his, his arms a lot more. So for this two, you want to start with 10 seconds. Step your legs, step righty off, step righty off. All the way off. Good job. Sit down nice and slow. Good job. Again, slowly building up the time, working on his endurance and his strength to uh, increase that left leg strength, right? That's my kind of edge. Um, so I'd probably, I'd probably work on this three to four times a week. So like I said, for 10 to 15 minutes at a time, having him stand up, uh, do one leg and sit down, switch legs and so on. We've also been working on a seated right press up. He's using his right hand down to lean forward and try, try to pick his bottom up off of the uh, mat table there. Make sure your are flat and straight. So we have his right hand down here. Lefty likes to help a little bit. We're trying to get Lefty to not help so much. But uh, for right now, just reminding him to have that Lefty's got to take a break, be jello arm, and not work, right? So I'm put it on his hand here, or his knee here. I'm sitting on his left side so I can weight shift him over to his right because if he's not weight shifted enough, he's just going to try to use his left side to press up. So I'll make sure his hand is down. I'm going to weight shift him over to that side. Relax, lefty. Relax it. Ready? And do nose over toes and push up. One, two, three, go. Good. That was really nice. That was really nice. Can you do another one? One, two, three, go. Press up. Ready? Good. Good job. You can see his hand is not, wasn't even touching his knee. He's using a little bit of his shoulder to kind of press into me a little bit but not very much. That was pretty much, that was a really good one for the right side. So these, I'd work on these probably four to five times a week, even if you just do 10 in a row of them and call it good. Okay? Yeah. Can you do 10 in a row? Yeah. Awesome. All right. So we've also worked on a little bit of back stepping with the walker. So I'll move the walker back a little bit. Okay, back step. Back step. There you go. This is really good for glute strengthening and hip extensor strengthening. Back it up. Back it up. I'd probably work on him going about five to five to ten feet at a time. Back up, Lefty. Here. Back it up. There you go. Good job. Back it up. I'd probably work on this like two to three times a week. You can just do like two sets, do like five to ten feet, and let him sit or walk forward for a little bit, walk forward back to ten feet, and then go do another five to ten feet. Do that a few times. There you go. One more. Okay, back it up. Good job. 